Today's story is an adaptation from The Athletic. If you like it, go and subscribe at theathletic.co.uk forward slash TIFO football to read more stories that you won't find anywhere else. At the time of recording, Barrow currently sit top of the National League, heading for promotion with a seven-point lead after 33 games. With their commitment to style over pragmatism, Ian Everts' side are attracting admiring glances from throughout the non-league game, especially due to their commitment to playing out from the back. Yet Barrow are doing much more than playing attractive football. They are top despite having a bottom six budget and on course to return to the Football League for the first time in almost half a century. This football is not like anything we've ever seen before, says Ryan Sutherland, who's followed the club for nearly 20 years and does everything from looking after the kit to working in the club's shop, selling tickets and managing Barrow's Twitter account. He's one of only two full-time staff on the operational side of the club. If you speak to some of our older fans, he says, they get a bit emotional talking about it, especially the fact that we could go up this year. We have people coming into the club in the week now just for a chat about how good it would be if the club got promoted. It's literally their dying wish to see league football here again. We've been nowhere near before. The closest we got was when we were in the playoffs for a brief spell four or five years ago under Paul Cox, but the football was just get it to the fullback and hoof it to the centre forward. People just didn't buy into that as much as they do now, so the way we're playing clearly does make a difference. Barrow have just had five consecutive attendances of 2,000 plus for the first time since they were in the Football League. They are tapping into a new fan base, aware that a generation of supporters were lost through the years spent in the wilderness and in the process of lifting some of the gloom in an area where the locals tend to drink from a glass that is half empty. Indeed, according to a survey carried out by the Office for National Statistics six years ago, Barrow was deemed to be the least happy place in the United Kingdom. It's a place incongruous with its club's rebirth. We've scored some good goals, manager Ian Everett says. One of them was after 24 passes, and we had another where every player touched the ball before it went in the net. Our fans started nicknaming us Barrow Salona. Everett made more than 500 appearances for Derby County, QPR, Blackpool and Chesterfield before taking over as Barrow AFC's manager in 2018. He describes himself as a modern-day coach with old-school values, who found an additional motivation at Barrow from day one. Everybody I spoke to said that you can't get out of the National League playing football, he says, and that made me even more committed to doing what we do. When he was appointed, the club was in a mess. Barrow had finished 20th the previous season, one point and one place above the relegation zone. Everett, whose managerial experience was limited to three games he spent in charge of Chesterfield as caretaker, didn't even have enough players for a -a five-a-side team. We inherited a club where the connection with the fans was completely gone, he remembers. they just survived the previous season, the crowds were low, the style of football was route one at best, and then we came in with this new philosophy and only four players, so we had to recruit a whole team in July. Everett's philosophy owes much to his time playing under Ian Holloway in a Blackpool team that won promotion to the Premier League in 2010 with what the former central defender describes as an attacking, expansive and brave style of football. But the biggest thing that Ian changed was the mentality of our entire club. That's what I bought into the most, Everett says. He wouldn't accept that Blackpool were just happy to stay in the championship and he didn't want us to accept that. The 38-year-old felt the same way about Barrow and the National League, Yet he soon realised that both himself and his assistant Peter Atherton, the former Sheffield Wednesday fullback and captain, had their work cut out when it came to implementing their football ideas. A simple rondo on the opening day turned into chaos. The first training session, we couldn't string three or four passes together. It was frantic, Everett says. But then, six weeks later, we're scoring goals when it's 24 or 25 passes. Everett brought in players who were comfortable on the ball, And then it was all about training how they play by working on possession-based drills, passing combinations and repetitive shadow play exercises. Coaching, in other words. I spent a lot of time studying Pep Guardiola's methods and training sessions and other people that play a similar style and philosophy to us, Everett says. Then there are what Everett describes as the non-negotiables, and some are quite intriguing. For example, when Barrow play a 4-3-3 formation, their winger on the opposite side of the pitch to the ball has to stay high and wide even when they're not in possession. He cheats, Everett says. Our centre forward occupies their two centre halves and so it always gives us that out ball, bang, counter-attack. 
Opta don't gather statistics at this level, but Lewis Duckmanton, the club's analyst and goalkeeping coach, has compiled his own. The average percentage of possession for us again this season is 59, he says. Average number of passes is 507. The highest possession in a game was 81%. We've got the best ball recovery time in the league, the most passes per match, and the highest time of the ball being in play. It shows how Guardiola's influence has stretched from Manchester City to the humble environs of Hoker Street, the 110-year-old home of the best non-league team in the country. Ball recovery time seems relevant too. Again, that's Pep's influence, the six-second rule, Everett says. If we're not winning the ball back in six seconds, there's something going wrong. Especially at this level, no disrespect, but the more pressure you've got on the ball, the more people struggle with it. Another relates to the psychological side of the game. At half-time, our players have to run in, that's non-negotiable. It sends that mental message that we're relentless. And one non-negotiable is absolutely fundamental to how Barrow play. Regardless of what the opposition do when we have a goal kick, whether they're pressing high or not, my players have to show for the ball. Then, it comes down to decisions. If a team do commit bodies to stop us playing out, we'll try and be brave, even if it means using the keeper to create an overload or the midfield players rotating. But we have this set plan, where the three centre-halves will go into the six-yard box, as you are allowed to do now, and the wing-backs will then stay high and wide. The midfield players will probably suck their midfield players in towards our goal, if they're going man for man and pressing high, and then we've got that opportunity to go bang, straight into Scott Quigley, a bit like Edison does with Aguero at times, and then it's more or less 4v4, but our structure, how we look to play out, it's non-negotiable. It's fascinating to listen to, and feels like a ballsy way to set up at a non-league level. It's massively ballsy, Everett says, nodding, but what is football, what do you believe in? I believe that football is there as an entertainment industry. Supporters work hard, nine to five, five or six days a week, to be able to afford to come to football. If my team are just going to set up to win games by set pieces and long balls, it's not what I'd want to spend my hard-earned money to watch. That said, Barrow's own supporters had to be re-educated about the new style of football they were seeing, and that process is ongoing. When we first started, there were moans and groans. And there still are one or two when we recycle the ball. Get it forward, get it in the box, Everett says, mimicking a northern accent. Within the National League, managers and clubs have genuinely been very complimentary about the way that Barrow play. Yet, there is also some curious post-match feedback at times that leaves Everett and Atherton slightly baffled. When you go and speak to some managers, they say, we'd love to play how you play, but I haven't got the players. Well, hang on a minute, your budget is three times what mine is. If you want to play football, Everett says, recruit footballers. It's that simple. Then coach them, teach them, improve them. The script for this video, written by Stuart James, originally featured on The Athletic, the best place to read about football online. Whether it's more behind-the-scenes insight, dedicated local reporting about your team, or rich storytelling from around the world, you'll find it all in one place. And there's so much more detail to today's topic. So, to read the whole story, get a seven-day free trial by visiting theathletic.co.uk forward slash TIFO football and get 50% off if you sign up for an annual subscription. To support TIFO, support The Athletic. Thanks for watching.